They go by many names. Pirates, heroes, contract killers, soldiers of fortune. There's always someone willing to pay for problems to be solved with the blade and the gun. Mercenary work is the business of war, and business is booming. A tense political atmosphere and the growing threat of the combined army means that there's a healthy demand for those willing to work for the highest bidder, or the most social media clout. Whether they're called PMCs or influencers, these soldiers are one thing above all else. They're mercenaries. So you want to be a mercenary. You want to have your name plastered across Mayanet. You want to take on fat contracts with big payouts and get famous doing violence. Merc work might be for you, but before you go out buying a chain colt, check out these top 10 tips for mercenaries in the human sphere. For a mercenary, reputation is everything. Whether you're famous or infamous, or neither, there's literally nothing more important than your company's rep. Not your gear, not your training, and certainly not your ethics. If you're a popular company, you'll roll into a settlement with your followers and fans all waiting to greet you. If you need a place to stay, or a hookup for some double action ammo, you can get it. It's one part hero worship, one part admiration, and one part genuine affection for do-gooders. The Van Orton Contracts Foreign Company is an extremely high-profile and popular group, and with good reason. They have an all-star roster of mercs that include Aristea champions, Avicenna, Kaplins, and Doctari. They don't rely on public transit. They've got their own ship, the FCS Modern Wife. All these AAA services come with a hefty price tag, though, and let them choose the most choice missions. Foreign Company gets to take down pirate ships, rescue orphans, escort refugees on Paradiso, and provide security on the most relaxing resorts on Varuna. Mercenaries of a certain high caliber are a mix of social media influencer and Formula One racer. Starco is literally the most famous PMC in the galaxy, with a strict ethical position dedicated to supporting human rights and individual liberties. Everyone wants Starco to use their guns, wear their armor, drink their beer, and sleep on their mattresses. Do you guys ever hear of Purple Mattresses? They sponsor a lot of podcasts. They don't sponsor me. I'm tiny. I'm the smallest. I'm doing lore videos on Infinity. Just like or dislike this video. Better let, leave me a comment for your favorite mercenary company, and I'll do them this year for sure. If your rep is good, doors are open that would normally be locked. If it's too good, though, you might miss out on some spicy contracts of a more questionable nature. Black sanction is a term used to refer to contracts that are not what they seem. You hop on the war market and you see a really generic contract. What you're really doing is signing up for a breaking and entering mission to ruin the reputation of some Maya icon. Black sanction means illegal and unsavory. Theft, drug running, intimidation, union busting, all the fun stuff that Aleph hates. You don't want to have a shiny reputation when you take on these jobs. Your employers will know that you're too much of a white hat and won't hire you. But you also don't want knowledge that you took it on to get out either. Trans Etheria Transport isn't going to hire you to guard a bus full of orphans if they know that you were behind that big orphan bus bombing campaign of 57 NC. They might even put out a bounty on your head. So, you take a black sanction job. Now what? You get paid through intermediaries in Quantronic bank accounts, or in hard resources like guns and ammo. Maybe they launder you the money through hats in Team Fortress 2, as was the case of pirate mercenary Jacinta Reed, who received payment in the form of rare items in the MMO Another Day in Hell. Maybe they get you to blow up some defenseless civilian ships in Human Edge. Maybe you smuggle something radioactive out of the Niman Zone in Paradiso. Maybe you torture a Eugene governor until he gives your boss what they want. When you take out a black sanction job, you don't ask questions, and you don't talk about it. You shut up, and then you enjoy your blood money. Bureau Ganesh is the O-12 agency that oversees international trade and economic practices. They are responsible for the war market, an exchange that allows for the hiring of mercenary soldiers with a small degree of civility and legality. The results keep brutality to a minimum and allow O-12 to keep tabs on armed groups across the sphere. The war market is such a beast that it deserves its own video, and once it's up, you'll see an annotation here. But to keep things brief, you'll be using the market to get jobs. First, Bureau Ganesh will establish the estimated value of the assets of your applicant company, and will translate that to shares available on the market, which will get you some seed funding for future operations. Assuming you're legit, an interested party will contact your agent. You do have an agent, right? Anyway, 
the party will alternatively meet with you directly at a WarCon. From there, you'll have one or more meetings and offer packages to the liking of the client. Finally, it's time to choose your team and deploy OUs based on the negotiated contract. An OU is an operative unit, which is a 10-person unit that includes a ranking officer. They were originally called battle groups, but the war market has since taken to adopting euphemisms in an attempt to avoid the unsavory nature of selling violence. After that, the next step is getting there. You're not going to be seen as a welcome sight for the authorities when you roll up. At best, you'll be seen as colleagues. If you've got enough of a Maya following, you might even have some fans. But the cops are always going to be on edge. Expect extra security watching you from the moment you arrive. In fact, you should probably check in with the local authorities as soon as possible. After all, checking in with the local government is standard practice, whether you're on Human Edge or Mars. You should turn on your tags, too. Your social cloud can broadcast your status as a licensed soldier of fortune. If you can give an air of legitimacy, the cops might even let you wield your fancy rifles and your custom battle armor. If not, then you'll probably be asked to check in your weapons of war when you get there. You won't be getting there on a ship, of course. A spacecraft is an expense that you will almost certainly never be able to afford. Besides, the circulars can be a very luxurious way to travel, and they can be very discreet when you're traveling amongst the masses. You might want to keep your tags off, though, allowing you to stay under the radar. That way, you won't have to answer questions like, whose robot is this? And why does it have a head shaped like a wolf? Or is this a Zoids? And do you remember Zoids? And let me tell you about my Zoids original character. Professional militaries use massive supply chains funded by state enterprise and taxpayer income. You do not. Everything you use, you lose. You're under constant pressure to reduce costs. That means your quartermaster is quick to stop questioning. Oh, where did you get that viral rifle? And your tactical manager will avoid things like, is this weapon a war crime? Clients care about PR, sure. But clients also don't understand just how close you'll be to bankruptcy. You're doing a violence for money. You're a disposable extension of a real military. You might just get away with breaking one or more laws with your gear. Speaking of gear, make sure to check out that one video I did on weaponry. There's more coming, but I want you to give it a watch before you decide on your loadout. Oh, or you can just buy an SMG. So, who would ever want to make a life as a soldier of fortune? Well, it's a surprisingly diverse makeup. Obviously, you have former soldiers, washouts, and professionals. The kind of people who left life in the public sector because they knew they could make more selling their services on the war market than to some home government. You've also got the professional who has no real soldiering experience, but has the kind of violent demeanor necessary for a fighting life. In an era where low-skill jobs are all but extinct, many who might have once worked manual labor have taken their muscles and put them to a more violent use. It's do a murder or learn to code, and for a large percentage of mercs, it was the murder. There are plenty of people who aren't even expected to pull the trigger, but are still on the team. Even in the middle of combat, you'll see managers, medics, engineers, accountants, and bureaucrats. See, it's not that uncommon for the bookkeepers to go on-site as advisors or even uniformed troopers to pad out the OUs. Most days, you might just organize scrums, but every once in a while, they throw a gun in your hands and tell you to shoot at the night on a motorcycle. Then, there are the glory seekers. Some say that the media glorifies war and bounty hunting. That seems unlikely. O12 constantly puts out very informative dramas about the horrors of conflict and advocates for peace. There are very few programs that glorify mercenary work, though, and with the exception of shows like Outlaw Star, The Expanse, Farscape, The Mandalorian, Firefly, Space Dandy, Interstellar, Hyperdrive, Three Below, Killjoys, Red Dwarf, Star Hunter, Battle Angel Alita, Another Life, Iria, Zyram the Bounty Hunter, Dark Matter, The Hard, Gunsmith Cats, Metroid, Black Lagoon, Star Hunter 2300, and Trigun, the effect has been greatly exaggerated. The human sphere's politics teeter on a knife edge, but standards of living have never been higher. Maybe you're bored working 15 hours a week and making a living wage. Maybe life in Rodina is dull. Mercenary work offers a chance to get famous and make money, and for the very top operators, a chance to look very good while doing it. 
If you want to look good, you'll need good gear. And if you want good gear, you'll need the help of the War Dogs. They're merchants of death, but they focus on logistics. They transport free companies to and from assigned theaters and run guns to set operations. War Dogs sometimes have the support of intel agencies like the Hexahedron or Imperial Service, and can conveniently let you borrow that Zoids, fresh out of the factory and airdrop to your war zone. If they're supplied by an intel agency, they'll wipe the serial numbers and avoid any political scandal. They'll hunt down any pesky journalist that tries to ask too many questions. For you, War Dogs have no loyalty. They'll get you to dawn, sure, but they might also have a competing PMC in different bunks on the same ship. You should absolutely know your stats if you're operating on the War Market Exchange. You've got the biggest ones, like the CSSE, or Customer Satisfaction and Service Extensions. That's how happy your clients are. But then you've also got your CVR, your Combat Victory Record. You can't forget your CE and CD estimate, or Cost Efficiency and Collateral Damage. Honestly, this is a big topic, and if there's demand for the hard numbers, stats, and explorations of the deep core logistics of how mercenary companies work, then I'll make the video. Uh, let me know in the comments. For every contractor that operates legally, there are five more that operate in the shadows. The war market engenders as much law and order as possible when dealing with cell swords, but there are more than a few PMCs that peddle their services via illegal channels. Submondo cultures have created The Lists, an underground resource for anyone interested in illegal, disgraced, red flagged, and rogue companies looking for a contract. Unlike the war market, The Lists only offer a basic info on a PMC. You get their cost, their availability, the services they provide, and who to contact. That's it. It's assumed that any job on The Lists is very illegal, and if you want to offer yourself in the black market, then you had better know how the black market works. Get your hacker to find Monica Blue, an underground AI program used to organize the lists. Register an account, and then get cracking. The lists aren't exactly secret, but it's not something that you discuss in the open. Nomads always pull from the lists as well as the war market, but they also use the free company guild. The FGC is undercut by the popularity and resources of the war market, and act as middlemen for those who want to avoid all the bulk and regulations of the exchange. They can get in touch with the most vulnerable populations of the human sphere, recruiting cannon fodder and desperate people to lower overhead. If you can't get an interview with the big boys, and you aren't criminal enough for the thug life on the lists, the Free Company Guild can get you started. Just don't expect them to do you any favors. Alright, so you're geared up and signed up and ready to go, yeah? Great, cool. I've got a plum job for you. Really easy. Nothing can possibly go wrong. See, there's this rich kid, and he's not answering his comm log. He's in Chinqui on Svalarima, getting involved in some charity work with an NGO we've never heard of. No problem. Just get in there, do some poking, and drag him home. You know, no problem, no complications at all. Alright, the views on these videos always take a damn nosedive around this time, so I'll keep it brief. Thanks for watching. Dislike the video. Comment with the PMC you want me to cover next. See you soon. Thanks.